inspire means to breathe into. So I'd like everybody to just take a deep breath in and out. So I actually changed my talk to Las Vegas, the most spiritual city in America. <laughs> and this quote, Las Vegas is the most spiritual city in the world, was said by somebody on the Conan O'Brien show. That person was Deepak Chopra. And when he was asked why would Vegas be the most spiritual city in the world, he said, Vegas is the only city that doesn't pretend to be something that it's not. <laughs> and that level of authenticity is just one dimension of spirituality that we're going to talk about. And first, I'm going to tell you about my journey to Vegas and my journey through spirituality. So I was dealing with depression and anxiety. Depression, low, right? Anxiety, high energy. They seem so different, and yet they're starting to collide because I found that my regrets were in the past, and that drove me into depression. And the worrying about the future was the anxiety. And yet I would sometimes get anxious about thinking about the things I didn't do in the past and get depressed about hopelessness in the future, and they were kind of going like this. And yet if I could just stay focused in that center of that infinite loop in the present, that would be my way out of that depression and anxiety. And so I thought, what could get me out of there? What would be that reverse time machine that would not take me to the past or future, but right here into this moment, into the present? And so I had an idea that I made called the Now Watch. I broke watches at first and created it so it just says the word now. It can't tell time. Because think about time. When you look at the time on your cell phone, it reminds you of the past and all those things you didn't do and where you need to go next, right? But this is the most accurate watch in the world. <laughs> it's right now. So I took 20 of these to Burning Man, and they loved it. They went crazy over them. And I thought, I got a business here, right? Got to get these out to the world. And so this is one of the prototypes that we made and invested a lot of money and created an entire brand, a fashion brand, a jewelry brand out of this message and started to spend a lot of money investing on this and then spent two years to get the trademark for this name, this concept. And then one day, I got this envelope in the mail and I was holding it in my hands. And I just knew, I'm getting sued. And I opened it up, and it was from the company that owned the word now on watches. Mine was a bracelet, technically, right? But they said, and I have a trademark for this. But they said, your trademark infringes on ours. And long story short, lost everything, went way into debt, got down into that cycle of hopelessness again. And rather than just going out to get a, a real job, I just said the only thing that's guiding me, spirit guiding me, is saying, I want to be a spinning instructor. <laughs> that's what hit me. I just want to be, I want to be a DJ with music. I want to be a coach up there. I want to work out. There's no money. There's like zero money in this, right? It's like <laughs> negative with the time you spend on it. But I got trained. I didn't tell anybody. And it got me all this energy to do all kinds of other things. And I became uh, uh, a marketer for this book called Tribal Leadership. My friend, Dave Logan, needed somebody to market it. That's how we got it to Tony Shea, and that's how I met Tony at Zappos and learned about the whole Zappos culture, one of the happiest places in the world. And Tony asked me to come on board and help create the company Zappos Insights to share that with the world. So I had my dream job, came here, committed, got out of debt, got a dream house, all this within a couple of years. And I thought, what's behind this transformation? Because the interesting thing about this is my story was not unique. I started talking to people, just even like at a Jiffy Loop once, and I hear similar stories of people either losing it all or coming here and losing it all, and then having a huge story of transformation once they were here and really committed. So I wanted to take a look. What's underneath that? Where is spirit really moving throughout Las Vegas? And one idea of spirit is light. God said, let there be light, right? And the thing about Vegas is what you're seeing here is the city with more light per capita than any other city in the world. 
bright lights, right? And what you see around there is this perimeter of mountains that forms this bowl that some have said is a prehistoric lake, and we were sitting where life used to be flowing through. And the Native Americans who were here before us noticed this, this bowl, this essentially womb, this feminine container that holds life, births, rebirths, and transforms. And that's where we're sitting right now. And of course this. Now obviously this one is an image of the pyramids, light going up to the sky, obvious references there. But the Mandalay, Bellagio, you name it, all of these, what they are, are modern day cathedrals. 40 million people a year come from all over the world to worship the gods of food, sex, money, <laughs> gambling. These are the new temples of America. So what is spirituality? So oftentimes people think of this. Right? To me, this is more about peace. This is relaxation. You know, they say, you want to know what enlightenment is? Spend a week with your family, right? <laughs> this is more about spirituality. When you're reduced to just you. And what the desert does is it shines a light on you and it strips you bare and shows you who you are and you can no longer hide from your own shadows. And the question is, are you going to face those shadows when you're here? Because if you don't, you die. And these are the people who come to Vegas and say, I hate Vegas. Oh, it was terrible. I had a terrible time. Those are the people who won't face their stuff. But if you face it, there's the opportunity to alchemize it into gold, your shadow into gold. The desert shall rejoice and bloom like a rose. And if you haven't gotten to that rock bottom point, we got an app for that. <laughs> there are all kinds of ways to take you to rock bottom. We can create your own VH1 behind the music story right here in Vegas, <laughs> where you lost it all and then rose to your next level of greatness. <laughs> Welcome to Vegas. What is spirit? Spirit, inspiration. Inspire to affect, guide, arouse by divine influence, to fill with enlivening or exalting emotion, to stimulate with action, motivate, to affect or touch, to draw forth, elicit, or arouse. Spirit is what lasts throughout all these changes. This is the desert. These parking lots, these empty lots that have been here that are ready for transformation into the rose in the desert. Because spirit may be here all the time, but spirituality is the cycle. It's the cycle of life, death, and rebirth. The Hindu gods of creation, maintaining and then destroying. And we've seen it constantly turn over here in Vegas, starting with those animals that were here, to the Native Americans, to the Mormons, to the train companies, to the mafia, to businesses, like Steve Wynn now to Zappos, Tony Shea and the Downtown Project. So, as part of this cycle, you are now a part of it. You are in it right now just being here. You are part of this transformational circle, and I'm glad you're here because it's about to get good. Thank you. <laughs>